Awesome. Thanks, guys, for joining me. Uh, Adam Zilko here. I've got uh, Mike White of CLA Connect, uh, one of the top uh, firms in the country to help dental practices uh, grow and thrive through, you know, well, he'll, he'll explain it through accounting and tax prep and so on. Some of the issues that we're all facing, a lot of the a lot of things we're seeing uh, in the media, uh, you know, with dentists reaching out is over basically what's going on right now, what to do with the economy in a down decline, what's going on uh, with, uh, you know, your dental practice, how to survive this, what do you do with your staff, how do you, uh, you know, how do you make the right preparations to stay open, do you close uh, partially or fully, how can you make money potentially in this time, and then also we're getting a lot of clients reaching out, you know, uh, how do, you know, what, what kind of loan should I take out, how do I prep, prepare myself for the upcoming, uh, you know, four to six weeks potentially without income, and what's that going to look like, and how can I mediate or uh, mitigate some of those risks, some of that loss. Uh, what I wanted to do is bring in, you know, like I said, one of the one of the foremost experts that I know, uh, Mike White. Thanks for thanks for joining me. And we've got yeah, his uh, associate uh, Eddie here. Uh, yes, Eddie, yep, and Eddie just joined in as well. Sweet. Thanks. Uh, thanks for joining me, guys. Uh, thanks, Eddie, for being able to make it. Um, basically, Mike, can you uh, can you just kind of introduce yourself? Uh, tell us kind of a little yeah, bit about absolutely. you, who you are, what what you guys do, and then. Uh, for those that yeah. don't know, it'll kind of stop. No, and I, I appreciate the opportunity, and certainly all of us are trying to get messaging out, and all of us are trying to educate the industry. Um, this is, you know, as much of a time to be education and be a, an advocate for the community, uh, and we realize this is unheard of, unprecedented time that all these dental offices, all these physician practices are going through. Um, as you mentioned, I'm a principal at CLA, along with Eddie. Um, he and I have been partners now for eight years together. Um, and we collectively, we run the dental physician team, if you will, on accounting consulting nationwide for CLA. CLA is a really big, small firm. Why we say that is, although we have offices all across the nation, we really run it as a community and we only focus on small business owners. Um, and dentistry and physician works out to about 7,500 practices nationwide that we work with today. Um, so we're blessed to be a part of this community and certainly are, uh, are feeling the pain with our practices right now. And, you know, Ryan, as you, or Adam, as you mentioned with Eddie, um, you know, for when we start looking at this process, um, you know, the conversations we've been having for the last couple of weeks is, do I shut down my doors? Do I close my practice? And now as it's shifting into this week, it's, I've now shut down my doors and closed my practices. Now what? So as we, we start through this dialogue a little bit, you and I were just chatting a bit um, in those conversations you're having. And I think it's really important for us to be, be there for these practices. But, um, you know, Eddie heads up more of our tax team. I pull him into tax as much as I possibly can, but I'll let him introduce himself as well. Eddie. Yeah, hey, thanks very much. Um, I'm uh, Eddie Garushi. I'm a principal with CLA as well. As Mike says, uh, we've been together quite a while and uh, now part of the CLA family. Um, I'm a, again a principal. Um, I work in the tax side and the CFO outsourcing biz up side as well. I uh, work with a um, uh, mix of businesses across a number of industries, including a, a lot of dental with Mike. Awesome. So, you know, like, like you said, Mike, we were kind of chatting before this. Um, you know, it seems like the dental practices kind of fall into a couple of buckets. One are, uh, you know, they, they want to find a way to still generate some revenue during this time uh, and, and, you know, mitigate some of the losses, some that have completely shut down and are trying to figure out what to do. And then I guess, lastly, those that uh, think that they've kind of lost all hope. They just want out of dentistry, want to sell their practice and move on. Uh, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and, you know, as we've talked, there's, yeah. there's opportunity in all this, right? Um, depending on what happens, you know, we do believe that depending on how long this goes on, we will see, Patients come back. It's like the same the same number of crowns or the same amount of dentistry, providing this doesn't extend too long, will still uh, transpire throughout the, the course of this year, providing they can get insurance, yeah. and they can keep that insurance. Um, you want to talk to kind of what you're seeing there and, and what, what advice you're giving? Yeah. yeah, no, absolutely. And I know you're going to be touching across the uh, range of the nation, if you will, and, and a lot of West Coast practices. And and as Eddie and I have seen, it felt like West Coast was a little bit ahead of the curve as far as offices closing. Right. Uh, certainly, as we look to Washington, you know, they, they not only closed early, but they also then said May 18th. 
Um, and what I appreciate about that is that they actually gave you a date. Yep. Uh, what we hope to that is the date is either, you know, isn't fluid out further, but maybe comes in further. But, you know, certainly you have a plan on that side. You know, as you kind of move down to California and you kind of move across there, uh, Texas just today announced April 21st was their, their closed date opening, if you will, or reopening. But again, you just hope that it doesn't change. So as we look to the conversations, and, and you mentioned we've heard all of it. I want to just sell my practice and be done. Um, I want to, you know, figure out how to keep this together and rebuild on the back end. And those are, of course, the inspiring conversations we're having. And, and the other ones are I'm somewhere in between. I need to keep Sally Jane. I always pick on Sally Jane in my presentations, but I need to keep Sally Jane. She's so critical. I need to keep this associate. Um, what is my scaled solution, if you will? And in, with every conversation, one practice is one practice, and it's, you know, it's unique. Your decision is your own. Uh, what you and I hope and Eddie hopes today to kind of guide you through what are our situations and, of course, how can we all help on the tail end of this um, through that process. So as we start putting together this conversation, you know, there was some legislation. I'm going to let Eddie uh, speak to that a little bit on the payroll side of some credits. If you have your employees after April 2nd, and I believe some of you may have already seen this legislation that you're following, it's like I'm going to keep my employees, but April 2nd is that really trigger point. Uh, where that new law kicks in, whether they may have some credits, they may get paid leave, um, they may get those pieces. Um, and then, of course, we have this loan package that's coming out to stimulate the economy, including dentistry, um, and checked right before we hopped on the call, and it still hasn't approved. Right. Um, but three hours ago, they said it should approve in the next few hours. So hopefully we're, we're right there and maybe right, even right. Yeah. while we're speaking right now. So, yeah, I hope, I hope but, so. Eddie, if you want to – yeah, I hope so. I hope so, too. And, Eddie, if you want to speak a little bit to the payroll credits, um, that'd be great. Yeah. And then we'll talk about some general conversations on the business side. Yeah, sure, Mike. Um, so effectively, they've come up with a, an emergency family leave act whereby if um, any of us or any of the, your employees are unfortunate enough to um, come down with the virus or you have to go into isolation because of contact, all the different there's different criteria there. And we'll go into the legalities of this more of a HR issue. But let's assume that they are. Then uh, effectively, you have to uh give them paid leave um and it's up to a maximum of uh, 511 dollars and the way it's working and then it, there's also a care elements so are similar to the fmla if you will whereby if there's a family member um that you have to care for because of their affected from uh, the coronavirus or all the different aspects of that that it's a it's a lesser amount but it's a longer period and then the way the payroll, the way that they're sent to the government is effectively going to fund it is through a payroll credit. So therefore, if say for example, you have um, your payroll taxes for that month was uh, whatever, or for that, for that week, let's just say for example, was $200 and you paid your employee $100. So your total payroll taxes was that when you get to the end of the month, you will offset the $100 you've paid out in leaves subject to that maximum of the 511, uh, it'll go against your payroll taxes. So you'll only have to pay the balance in payroll taxes. So it allows you to fund it. Uh, they also have said that if, uh, and I, I, initially when I thought this, is, you thought it mightn't happen, but because of the nature of this virus, it's, li it's likely that if one person gets sick, a lot of a number of people will get sick in the right. same workplace. It's quite, going to be quite common. So if that happened and you had to pay a number of employees such that your paid leave that you've been paying is greater than the payroll taxes for that month, there's a, it's a refundable tax credit so you'll actually get that refunded. Uh, how that mechanism is going to work is probably uh, one of our big um, question marks. Right. The IRS, uh, particularly on the payroll side, they're not quick to refund money. Um, both from a, I'm not so sure whether it's a, they don't want to, they generally are, uh, I, I think it's a mixture of that and just their systems aren't set up for it. And that's, going to be a big challenge particularly if this gets a lot bigger so yeah or you know alternatively yeah. if they'll allow you to carry that balance forward you know if there's a credit and then yeah yeah I, I imagine they'll give you that option but the, the reality is as, as michael tell you everybody wants every dollar right now i know so, right now We're, and, and i want to i want to talk about that too with you guys because one of the one of the common questions i get from people that are reaching out are you know how do i 
how do I generate capital immediately? What are my options? And a lot of uh, those that are reaching out don't really like the SBA loan uh, solution or option, if you will. Uh, you know, and I know that, that there are going to be most likely going to be solutions coming down shortly on alternative loans that will support, uh, you know, small businesses with, uh, that, that don't take as much work and, and, and have other options to account for uh, covering, uh, you know, employees and, and staff cost payroll, things like that. So you might get some sort of uh, a relief on that too. Uh, what can you speak to in regards of like how you would, you know, recommend that, that uh, practices go about it right now? Go about yeah. you know, and, finding capital. And, and I think it's, yeah. So the biggest thing right now in this marketplace is of course, start with your existing lenders. So when we even take a step back from that finding capital conversation, it's, what are we doing as business owners? And we're all, we're all business owners on this call, including the folks that are going to watch this. What are we doing as business owners to put ourselves in a position um, to be successful after this? So right. we talked yeah. about this maybe lasting till May 18th, may last till June. Some folks I talked to in California today are speculating June, July when they're doing their cash flow modeling and conversations, but that's just when they open the doors again, then you have another 60 days that you need to have some runway yeah. to build those schedules back up, get some marketing dollars deployed, get your team back on place where production doesn't follow collections on the same day. Um, so when we start looking at this conversation, it's we need to be having conversations with our bankers immediately. Yeah. You know, Bank of America, Wells, JP Morgan, most of the big banks, Wintrust, Live Oak, most of these big banks that are in dentistry or serving this community um, have already put together a program and said, we're going to go interest only for 90 days. And we'll see where we are after that point, right? So that's sometimes your biggest cash flow item that you have. Um, then start having conversations with your landlord. Well, in some cases, you are the landlord, so you have the mortgage. So again, have the conversation with the bank on that side of it as well to see what are you going to do in order to close, you know, give us some time. You know, we have this decision of what we need to do with our employees, um, but let's come back to that conversation. And I know Eddie just gave some great dialogue on that. If you decide to keep your employees after April 2nd. Um, but when we start looking at the rest of our vendors, we have landlord, we have bank, we have our suppliers, your vendors, every one of them, we need to have a very honest conversation because we certainly are watching the news. We certainly see what's going on. Um, and we're really working there to be there with you and to be part of this conversation. I know we are, Adam, you and I were just chatting right before we got on this. These are conversations you're having every day. Uh, when we start looking through this whole process, um, we're here to be there when you open back up because we know dentistry isn't going away. Um, you may not want to do it anymore and we can have that conversation, but the industry isn't going away. It's just a matter of where are we and how do we serve our patients on the tail end. But when we start looking at that cash flow need or whatnot, I'll try to real quick um, and see if this works. But just doing this real quick, I don't know if you can see that. Um, just on a cash flow model, if you will, what we started looking at was this curve. Uh, are you able to see that, Adam? Yep, absolutely. All right, perfect. What we're looking at is just a COVID planning curve is what we're calling it, but truly building out a cash flow model for practice to say, okay, if you're closed 90 days, what does this look like? If you're closed 60 days, what does this look like? And what are those assumptions that we need to make along the way? So a real quick model. And as you're thinking through each one of these variables, and again, this would be designed for each practice, as you're thinking through each one of these variables, what are our bottom line drivers? What are those expenses that we're going to get a delay on? But you have to be mindful. Just because you're getting a delay doesn't mean you don't owe the money later. Right. Um, so, you know, from that standpoint, I'm going to flip back over. From that standpoint, as we start having these conversations, just go through your most recent P&L statement. And hopefully from your CPA, like us, you're getting it every month. Um, but go through the most recent one you have. And start seeing, okay, what are the expenses that are hitting these accounts and what are my absolutely necessary business expenses? And then on the personal side, we need to do the same thing. Um, so when we start working through these pieces, it's just building a cash flow model and saying, all right, with your landlord, they're going to give us three months deferment. Offer to add three months on the tail end of your lease. For them, that should work out in that conversation. On the, the, you know, the lenders, 90 days, but they're doing interest only. So they're still getting their interest. Right. Um, do you have that little bit of effort there? So I'll stop for a minute and, um, you know, chat through some other stuff as well. But No, I think that's all excellent. Uh, you know, one of the things that we've been 
hearing and that I've tried to you know provide back to those that have asked is you know what can I do to acquire capital now, uh, mm-hmm. you know taking out yep. lines of credit, uh, you know figuring out just basically how you can stay the most liquid as as you mm-hmm. can. Uh, yeah. What I've found is a lot a lot of the large institutions like Chase and others they don't they're not as open to do lines of credit uh, mm-hmm. as, as easily right. as you will find with uh, credit unions and smaller local yeah. banks. Uh, so, so maybe you guys have seen that. And then I've also yeah. have uh, advised that they should at least start the SBA loan process, even if they don't use it, because yep. it's going to be, regardless, yep. there's going to be a queue. Uh, there's likely going to be a wait for that. And we don't know what's going to happen with this other program yeah. yet. There's no reason yep. to wait until we do. Get get everything yep. you can going now. Yeah. And, and the likelihood, yeah, the likelihood is a lot of the information on, that loan will be probably the same on the, this new right. um, emergency package. Um, the, the emergency package, which uh, the details of what we have now, obviously it's still being chewed over, so we're, we're not fully sure, but the, from uh, what we've seen in drafts and stuff like that, it seems to be, uh, it, it will be a source of capital. So it'll be an SBA loan. It's going to be different to the disaster loans in that it's not going to be run through the SBA disaster fund directly because I don't think it would have the bandwidth to get this money. So they're going to use the banking system and probably the larger banks predominantly, as Mike says, go to your your own bank first and see if they're going to use. But again, um, so the way it's going to work is a a loan for four months of fixed operating capital, if you will, be it payroll, uh, utilities, uh, mortgage or rent payments, whichever and existing um, loan uh, obligations and the idea of it will be four it'll be four months of that to keep it going uh, through that period then at the uh, it's going to be what we've heard in draft was going to be about 3.7 percent right mike yeah 375 which is a great rate yeah and uh, amortized over i've heard 10 to 15 year period even though i've heard other things today even longer but but let's see what that looks like in any case it's 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 amortized over a decent period um so the, the idea there is and then the additional piece of it then is uh, hopefully and hopefully it's not four months it's a lot sooner than that we get out the other side of this there is a debt forgiveness portion which is effectively a grant aid if you will so there'll be a debt forgiveness for the portion of this that is related to the payroll piece is my understanding and that's on the basis that you maintain your uh, same payroll if you reduce your payroll somewhat down they will uh, prorate it my understanding is and again the exact mechanisms and the exact calculations are they going to use the q1 figures the q12 2019 figures again these are the things we don't know right now uh, but it's definitely, um, I mean, we're advising all of our clients to, even if you feel you're not hurting right now, because obviously in the dental world, people are hurting just immediately. Right. It's just pure pain. Um, yeah. but I've got other businesses that are, um, bizarrely, I've got some businesses that are actually in the oil services industry, and it's hardly met the news that oil has fallen off a cliff. I have forgotten mm-hmm. about uh, but at least they have something coming in there on another week they would be it would be complete crisis there but again i'm advising them listen let's let's all use this fund because we're all going to be hit with this directly or indirectly be it accountants marketing companies er, er, there's nobody not going to be hit so we all have to look yeah at it. It, and i know the FA process is incredibly daunting they're working to streamline it as much as possible to eddie's point if they do in fact allow them to process through the JP Morgans of the world, the Wells Fargo, Bank of America, uh, Live Oaks, a big, you know, SBA producer as well. That helps quite a bit in that process. When we start looking through, just going straight through SBA website, which is what's being recommended right now, it's being very overwhelmed, overloaded. Um, so we're telling people you're going to have to do it first thing in the morning or or late at night. Uh, I would be a first thing in the morning. Eddie would be the night person. So. You know, working through that whole process and saying, let's let's get this approved because to Eddie's point, at three point seven five percent, you aren't going to get that from a bank. Right. One, two, if there's if there's a forgivable portion, which is what we're speculating, you know, the debt forgiveness, we have a taxation component, but 
just you know spending saving a dollar and spending thirty cents in taxes. So um, that type of you know, money funds, if you will, is not available in normal programs, and that's just we're trying to stimulate or the government trying to stimulate the economy. So yeah, another thing to build on Mike's point there is our understanding is that uh, you know typically the SBA loans are fifty percent guaranteed by the government and fifty percent by the banks. Well, apparently this is going to be 100% guaranteed by the government. So the banks aren't going to have necessarily skin in the game. Right. So they are not, the whole point is to just expedite this process. Yeah. The other thing is, uh, my understanding is there's going to be no personal guarantees and no collateral. Is, is that your understanding, Mike? I definitely heard yeah, no that's, that's my guarantees. understanding as well, which is where SBA normally is not that way. Yeah. Right. Um, so having the ability and, and there, the question there is one question we've been guided to have, you know, have you been able to get capital anywhere else? Um, and then at this time, I would say the answer is going to be no. Uh, you're not going to be able to get it elsewhere. Yeah. What all these banks are talking about, the Bank of America, we already have a loan at Bank of America and, and you know, Live Oak and all these banks. They are going to work with you. Um, they're working with their existing customers first before they do new loans. And they're really working through the workout process first, meaning the deferments first, before right. they give out new loans. So really, for that purpose, you aren't going to have access to much capital. If you have a small community bank and work, one you work with, you may, and that would be if you have a great relationship, talk to them. Um, you're going to need enough capital. Think more than you need and use it as a line of credit. And just don't use it. Don't take it if you don't need it. If you can cut your personal life back, let go of some of your employees, you know, get your vendors down, get your deferment done, your loan payments done. Don't take out loans where you don't necessarily need them, but certainly you want to be able to open your practice back up on the tail end of this. So. Yeah, that, I, I completely, uh, I think that's great advice. Um, you know, there's, uh, there's just so much uncertainty as to how much capital anyone's going to really need. So just, mm. you know, what I, what I've always been advised, Prior to this, and then obviously going into this, is just have have these open lines of credit just in case something happens, yeah. regardless if you don't use it. Yeah. Uh, and I think there's a good, regardless of what happens here, there's good lessons to be learned, right? Have the yeah. just have access to capital just in case, uh, you know. And yep. this is this is a perfect example where that's going to be useful. Yeah. That's absolutely right. Yeah. Absolutely right from that standpoint. So, so what? Um, oh, go ahead. Yeah, as Mike says, right, right, right now, the whole markets, I, I wouldn't like to be looking for a loan if this wasn't there right now or any line of credit. Yeah, yeah it can be, uh, if you don't have relationships, um, yeah. you know, personally, I, I know, I, I know uh, certain people at certain, you know, vice presidents of banks and things of that sort. So I, I know I, I, I can get access to that if I needed it. Yeah. Uh, and it's just by having those relationships that I've had for a long time. And that would be, uh, you know, get to know those guys, you know, so that down the line, if you need access to something, you certainly yeah. have that. I don't know what else you would yeah. do with these days. Yeah, um, no, and that's, that's right. And the same with your vendor relationships. Don't, this is where ultimately relationships, I know, I know you probably get the same test where you have clients that are just clients and don't want to hear from you. And we have clients that have a deep relationship with you work through. I mean, we all do those clients that are have a deep relationship with me and don't treat me as a commodity at the moment. Um, those are the ones we're bending over backwards to do whatever we can for. And the same with bankers, the same with landlords. Yep. Um, and you know, that's, that's how we all move the world forward is, is relationships. And that's why you facilitated this call. And that's why we jumped on because we have a great relationship uh, to do that. So I think that's critical is developing those relationships and, Use this opportunity to develop relationships you may not have had before. I think it's a key component. And that also goes into your employees. So I know we, we said we'd push the employee conversation off to the side um, and come back to it. So as Eddie laid out, um, the key components not only for the loan, which would be the small business interruption loan, if that, again, passes the way it's supposed to, and then, of course, the payroll credits um, that, get, that already has passed. And if you have those employees past April 2nd, each of you need to decide or am I going to carry these employees past this April 2nd mark? That is your drop dead date. And that would include for benefits, payroll, payroll taxes along, you know, along that line. Um, and then possibly risk that they leave out on the C virus or family, family leave act or anything like that, where you're still stuck with the bill. Um, or do you, you furlough them and, and kind of work through it, lay off. And I'm not an employment lawyer. We're not going to tell you 
which way is the right way to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but work through that process with your employment lawyer, with your HR person to do it properly so you can hire them back in three months, two months, one month, whatever this may be, um, and do it in a respectful manner where, you know, again, you want them back. This is just a situation. Help them get unemployment as they can um, to make sure there's food on the table for them, all that kind of stuff. So, okay. And so, communication is so important at this time with everybody, be yeah. it all of your stakeholders, be it your customers, your patients, your uh, your employees, your vendors, you know, uh, yeah. everybody, n- nobody's stupid. It, it, this is a horrible situation. Everybody gets it. So. Yeah, yeah, you know, the, 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 the difficult thing is you really – you couldn't plan for this and no, it wasn't no. like anyone messed up, right? There's not like, there wasn't a business no. that, that made a mistake that caused this. We're just, we're all unfortunately affected by it. Yeah. Uh, one, yeah. one last topic I think I would, I would really like to uh, yeah. talk about is what advice or what, what do you see in Dennis? Like, how are they preparing to come out of this stronger? We have some advice from a marketing perspective and how to, yeah. how to stay in front of, uh, prospective patients like for example now is a if you can do it and we've got strategies to do it now is an amazing time to advertise because you have no competition and ad costs have never been cheaper uh you know and there's there's solutions virtual medicine telemedicine style uh situations that we're advising to but what do you see in uh in, in terms of you know how practices can set themselves up to get out of this and get themselves ahead much much quicker and w- one last thing i'll preface yeah. with is you know we saw a lot of practices that went through you know the 2008 recession, and they they took a long time to recover. They they didn't really invest uh, going into it, and especially coming out of it because they lost money and they were afraid to spend yeah. anything, and they just struggled for many years. I guess what are you advising and what are you seeing? No, and it's and it's well, one I love all your strategies and points, and I think that's not only you know so many of us talk about our new patient count, our cost per acquisition of new patient we're also remarketing to our existing patient base. What did we as a market, you know, as a dental practice do to sterilize our practice, get ourselves right, you know, make sure that we took extra precautions during this time, because as Eddie mentioned, as you mentioned, this is unheard of time. Nobody could have planned for this. Mm -hmm. We've always said have three months of cash available, whether it's through cash and working capital. But in this case, I don't even know if that would have been enough. Yeah. Um, we'll, We'll find that out here shortly, but when we start looking at it from a marketing standpoint, we still want to see media going out. You know, maybe it's not to the level or maybe it's not for the same purpose, but your patients want to hear from you. They want to know what you're doing. That team member, that Sally Jane that you may have that's still working schedule and taking all those cancellation calls now, you got to make sure there's a treatment, you know, coordination on the back end of this. You got to make sure that there's getting that schedule uh, open back up. And, and what you and I were talking about right before we hopped on this was, what are we doing to expand our schedule? If you're a four day a week practice today, are you a five, six day a week practice on the tail end of this Absolutely. to get that pent up demand? Right. Um, are you looking at, you maybe never had dental membership plans. Are you looking at dental membership plans now? Because some of these patients may come out of here without insurance. Right. Um, so is this a time to now market to that and market to that patient base you know, of what you're doing? Are you gonna expand hours? So maybe you were nine to five and now you're seven to seven. And maybe it's a three month window. It gives your employees a little overtime. So you have to manage to that, but it gives your employees some goodwill gives your patients some good schedule and gives you the ability to rebuild your practice. And as you mentioned earlier, get back on track. You know, we're early enough in the year. If we come out of this early enough in the year um, that we can rebuild and have a same year that we had before um, or get into the Q1 of next year and be back on track, of course, as we plan through it, but be on a runway by Q2, Q3 of this year that, we're comfortable with, we're healthy with, and, you know, working through that. But I, I think from an investment in, in marketing components and investment and in staying in front of your patients, even if you have to schedule out, you have an unknown, you know, of course, May 18th, we know that for Washington. So you should already be scheduling those patients to come back May 18th, right. May 19th, May 20th, letting them know what you're doing, keeping constant communication going and let them know that, Hey, if the schedule gets opened up earlier, if we're allowed to open up earlier, then, you know, we're going to, we're going to do that. Um, you know, let them know that for emergency cases that you're still open, you're going to make yourself available in that concierge type model um, and have that kind of communication on that side. I think it's incredibly important. So I, I genuinely believe that there is uh, there's tremendous opportunity now. And I, I do believe there's going to be a lot of practices that will come out of this uh, spending and investing less. Uh, there are already, you know, a lot of practices have shut down. We still have 
we still have a lot of practices that are saying, hey, I still want to market. I still want to stay in front of people. But let's, they, they want to take our advice. And they want to pivot into emergencies. They want to pivot into telemedicine style uh, initial consultations. Yep. Uh, and we're, we're, believe it or not, we're still seeing people reach out for cosmetic, you know, uh, implants, yeah. things of that nature that they know are big cases. It's, they're not going to see treatment to, today anyway, but they can start having those yeah. conversations that if they can do them virtually, they can mm -hmm. start building that relationship and starting to schedule them out. And then if it is emergency yep. related, uh, they, can, they yep. can figure out what's going on. Uh, and if they have to schedule them to come in, uh, we've, we've advised, you know, to create a, a, a process for that. So have them wait in the car and tell that you're ready for them. And then, you know, as they're coming in, check them at the door, make sure they don't, they're not running a temperature, things of that nature. And, and, and explain yep. that ahead of time. Uh, and then lastly is, you know, put, put that out, there, put it on your site, put it in social media, put it in your ads. You're doing all these things because look around, no one else is. And so yep. you have, you now have all your potential patients, but now you have everyone else's patients that, that don't have anyone else. Yep. And if you can, yeah. give them a better uh, experience and, and be there for them now, those patients may actually jump ship. Yeah. I mean, there's yeah. or maybe they don't have anyone, but you yeah. know, instead of competing with 50 other practices, it's like you and three other guys. Right. And so yeah. there's a lot of opportunity. And, and I think there's, you know, there's yeah. the, the practices that, that take advantage of that now will be smart. The, yeah. the, the other thing I want to say real quick is that. And I would say real quick. Before that, I think the other fun. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Well, let me, I'm going to come back to that. Okay. Um, but the other yeah. thing I think yeah. building on the marketing piece is we all know we're all tired of turning on the news. I know you and I were talking right before we get here. I have the news right. on uh, TV behind me here. Right. Now I have, you know, the uh, Antarctica cliffs of ice or whatever, but Love it. you know, have the news on behind me and, and we're working through this whole deal, you know, put some media out there that, that puts, Hey, this is what I'm doing to stay at home. This is the push up yeah. challenge. I think was what I saw this morning. Um, these are the things that we're doing as a family and it kind of personalized a little bit yeah. with you and your team and, and those folks that are, are willing to say, hey, we're all in this together because as human okay. beings, as we all are, we are human beings. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we want to see ourselves through this. We, want to, we don't want to see these numbers of, of unfortunate fatalities that we're seeing on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, mm -hmm. Nobody wants that, you know. So let's work through this together. Let's, you know, share. I know that Italy is doing a great job putting out the music and the workouts on the patios and things like that. Right. I love seeing right. that kind of stuff. Um, you know, I'd love to see, I think what I'm seeing more in the you know, States is, uh, the beer drinking in the patio, which is great, you know, have your neighbors out six feet apart, have a beer. Uh, but sure. you know, from, as we start looking through this, but your, your comment on hiring us, we'd love to work with you. You know, we're doing a lot of planning right now. Uh, for those of you who don't work with us today, by all means, you know, you'll get out the, our contact information and share some information. Uh, we probably have an office in your area. If not, you know, a lot of stuff we do on the North Texas area uh, market. Uh, is our dental shared services center. So we do a lot out of this marketplace for clients in 42 states today. So welcome the opportunity to help you even, you know, and this is again, me being value as a community, even if it's a one off question, you work with fire gang today, you know, I'm offering a free assessment. I'm offering just a consultation by all means, reach out to us. And, and I'm happy to have a conversation with you. And, and if it turns into something great, if it not, I can do my part and help you out. That'd be great. So, so I think it's, the, it's, it's thing. Oh, go ahead. No, one other thing I was just going to build on there, some of the things that Mike said. Uh, I, I'm looking at this, my, my, my pet hobby is as a futurist, and I think, <laughs> this, this, uh, I think this moment in time is it's like no other. I mean, you, you think of 9-11 and something like that, I think um, this is actually way bigger. because. It is. Of, and when you think of all the ways that our behavior, so many things changed in our lives after 9-11, and we take them for granted today, taking shoes off in an airport, taking, you know, all, all these things. Think of the things that are going to come out of this. And one of the things that's pretty good with the dental industry, I'm thinking uh, oral hygiene has got to be up there with one of the, one of the most critical things out there and surely dentists can make a, a deal out of that. The other thing is uh, you mentioned there about uh, tele doctoring or I mean, oh, the reason I, I have talked to one or two dentists that have done some consultations across things. And um, if the technology moves a bit more, whereby more diagnostics or more whatever can be done like this, because I'll be honest, with you, this is Mike. Is this our third or fourth of these today, using about yeah. four different uh, yeah. IT systems? <laughs> <laughs> and it's that I, I'm a lot more likely to get on the phone and do something. But now that I've used this a lot in the last two weeks, I'm a lot more comfortable with it. I don't know yeah. about you guys. Yeah. 
So I, I think this will become a lot more normal, um, you know, and it means also that we can, the, the point there is to, to a certain degree, you'll be able to do stuff from people that are a little bit further away and won't have to come to you, you know, I mean, outside of your immediate area. Of course. Yeah, yeah you, you know, the thing that uh, I, I wanted to point out is that, you know, while it might be too late to have, you know, got ahead of this, uh, you know, I think it is for a lot of us who didn't expect it, this type of scenario is ideally once in a lifetime event and there's other scenarios that will happen, but you can begin to plan for those things. Now, I think that working with a, a, a firm like you guys, you know, you can, you can set people up for success and help protect them against future scenarios uh, in which this, this, these, these types of things, ideally not like this, but, but you know, yeah. something catastrophic or whatever, you know, you guys can, you can help protect them for that and yeah. set them up. Uh, for their future. And that's, and for us, our, our average practice we work with is on a quarterly basis, at least at least quarterly, sometimes monthly, um, as much as they'll allow us to be around. We put right. budgets in place. We want to budget down to doctor days work, production per patient, number of patients seen, new to active patients. So when you're thinking about your current CPA that just does your tax return, just does your financial statement, are they going over it with you? Or do they understand enough of the schedule um, to, you know, enough of your industry to understand the flows and ebbs and flows of the schedule and utilization and production per patient and collection ratio and, and have those conversations with you. So if you say you want to grow 10% this month, or in this case, we want to come on the tail end of this and we want to ramp up 50, 75, 100%, you know, what does that look like on the schedule? How many columns are we running? What's our hygiene to doctor ratio? That kind of stuff. You know, that's what our team is designed to do and have those conversations. And that is our standard relationship. Uh, we also do tax returns, and we do thousands and thousands of them. And, but we are so proactive in your planning process, that becomes such a, oh, yeah, and we did a tax return for you because you're ready for it. The right. plan is there. The preparation is there. Everything, you, you are already ready for the return to be done. Then it just becomes filing paperwork with the IRS and not surprises, which so many of us are, are dealing with today. Right. So, you know, welcome through that. As you look at this, does this interest you? Um, you know, we'll partner with our local office and have a great conversation and, and go through that assessment, answer any questions that are really pertinent to right now, because that is critical and we understand that. Um, but we'll start having those conversations of how do we get out of this? Because that's where, you know, last week was a lot. I'm shutting down my office. I'm letting go employees. This week truly is, all right, let's talk about opening back up because yeah. it's going to happen. So now what? Right. And right. those are the exciting conversations. That gets us excited as well. Uh, I don't know, for, for Texas, we're not used to seeing as much cloud cover as we've seen the last eight days. Well, today we finally have sunshine, so it's, it's all going to be a good day, and, and we'll, we'll get through this together. So I appreciate the opportunity for, for the time, and, and again, you know, working with you um, as always, and let me know how we can help, and maybe even do this again later in the week or next week if uh, more information comes out. Yeah, we, we probably will. Uh, I'm going to, what I'll do is I'm going to send this out to the to everyone. Uh, we'll, we'll send it out to our list. We'll actually put up a page around it. I'll get you guys that information too. Uh, but Please. if anyone has questions that are reaching out, uh, they, they'll be able to find all the contact information on that okay. page Perfect. there. Uh, you know, and reach out to me personally if, if, if you need. I, I think the, the practices that begin to get ahead of this now that just stay, uh, you know, vigilant and begin to invest back into their practice, I think you're going to come out of this a lot stronger because so many other practices Agreed. are, they're just kind of holding their money uh, and they don't, yeah. they're, they're fearful of what, what may happen. So I, yeah. I hope this was helpful. Um, any, yeah. anything else you guys Me too, have? me too. No, that's it. I really appreciate it. And it's good to catch up. I'm glad you guys are doing well. And, um, and as more information comes out, we'll send it your way as well, just so you're keeping abreast of it. We're hoping mm -hmm. the loan stuff comes out tonight. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Everybody keeps so. saying. So. Everyone that's watching, uh, appreciate that. it. Everybody and, saying uh, that. Yeah. Appreciate we'll everyone that soon. had a chance to watch this. If you have questions, reach out. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.